Angela, you teach at Oberlin. Yes. You're Associate Professor of Piano at Oberlin. Mm -hmm. What is it like performing with the Oberlin Orchestra? Oh, it's a thrill. It's a thrill. Um, first of all, it was wonderful to work with Br Bridget. Uh, she's just been so incredibly accommodating and just um, just making sure that I'm as comfortable as possible. And it's just very, very generous of her. And to have given me so much time and just so much care in her preparation. And it's just been a thrill to work with her. And then to play with these, these young virtuosos in the orchestra and uh, seeing them get you know, so excited. Uh, it's just, it's just been a thrill. Um, I was commenting to my husband as we were traveling here. I said, you know, it's, it's so nice. Usually I go on my own. It's so boring. <laughs> now we get a whole bus load of people and uh, it's, 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 it's a sense of excitement that I haven't felt in a long time. So it's, it's been, it's been a great, what, two weeks in, pre in preparation for this. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, now you're performing Beethoven's Piano Concerto Number no. Four mm -hmm. on the program. What is unique about this particular concerto? Well, um, I think, uh, and and I don't think it's just me who feels this way. Most pianists, I think, if they were had to choose three piano concerti to take with them as their very favorite to to a desert island, Beethoven Fourth would be one of those. Uh, that would be my very first choice. Why is that? Well, it, it's it's just incredibly special and beautiful. Um, there is such spirituality in the work that um, that one really feels, you know, that you get a, a, a peer at Beethoven's soul in this piece. I mean, not only is is the piece unique in that it, you know, instead of having an orchestral tutti, you know, if you sit there for two minutes, sometimes sometimes three minutes before the pianist get, gets a chance to play, you actually start the piece. And what a way to start with this most glorious, most sublime statement. In very simple harmonies, but yet um, he takes it to a, to a degree where it just takes my breath away when I play it and when I hear it. And then when the orchestra comes in, I, and with this, basically the same melody, but in the key of B major, the transformation. Um, and so, so instead of on earth, we are now transported to heaven, you know, at that point. So it, it really moves me, and, uh, um, and I think that's just one of the special, unique things about the piece. Well, we in the audience are transported to heaven, too. Oh, <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> Angela, can you talk a little bit about the character of the second movement, mm -hmm. the Andante? Yeah. <laughs> Well, this is a, a real unique movement as well. I mean, the, the original meaning of concerto is it's a, a, a competition between piano and orchestra, a, a fight to see who is winning. And, and this is perfect in the second movement. I mean, you have the orchestra in forte and these angular dotted rhythms, and then the, pia the pianist comes in as if ignoring everything that's been said, plays in these pianissimo, very, very stately chords. and as if it's trying to placate whatever the orchestra is feeling, the anger that they have. And you can see how the two does finally meld together by the end of the slow movement. And the way they join forces at the end is just heartbreaking. And then, and from that, it, it slips into the third movement in this most magical way. And um, I, I think that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, a unique second movement in the history of piano. For an audience member uh, listening to this piece, what harmonic surprises should they be aware of or listening for? Yeah. Well, um, you know, he is such an innovator. I mean, he, he had great respect for the old classical forms. You know, you know the first movement is definitely in uh, sonata allegro form, you know, where there's the first theme, there's the second theme, and in, in contrasting keys. But it's the way he modulates. Um, I talked briefly about the opening, how the, the piano states in, in G major, and then he brings the orchestra in with the exact same melody notes, um, at least in the first measure and a half, but he puts it to B major. It, 
jumps it up a third. You're not supposed to do that this quickly. Um, but yet he does it and, 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 and makes magic with it. Um, the same thing with the last movement, between the second and the last movement. The, key, the second movement ends in the key of E minor, and you get this E overhanging, and he takes this E and transforms it into C major when the orchestra comes in the third movement. But the key of the, the work is really G major. What are we doing starting a movement in C? And all of this is just kind of this unsettling that he eventually finds his way to its home key, to G major. And then you think, oh, that's where the lightness comes in. That's why this is so, you know, unsettling at the beginning, you know. And so I think, you know, his play with keys, again, I mean, to, to our modern ears, it's not so surprising and it's not so um, uh, maybe exciting. But can you imagine what it was like in his time, hearing this in the first time? I mean, I can't imagine. I mean, the, the people must have been on the edge of their seats, going, what's going to happen next? And, and as a performer, it's our, as a performer it's, it's our responsibility to make sure that we remember how startling and how incredibly um, exciting and new this is. Angela, what was the first experience you had listening to this piece? Do you remember where you were when you heard it? I, I do. I do remember. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was very young. I was, I think, I, I think I was 15. Uh, I was living in Edmonton in Canada. And I remember a pianist coming through. Uh, his name is Anton Querty, a Canadian pianist. He played this concerto, and I, I couldn't afford to be sitting in the in the orchestra, so I had the seats, you know, in the very top of the second balcony. And I just remember hearing this opening of this was, this concerto. I leaned all the way out at the edge of my seat to try to figure out what was going on. Why is he starting? The orchestra is supposed to start. He's not supposed to start. What's going on? And, and then to hear that slow movement, the way it trend, you know, um, goes into the third, it's just amazing. I, I, I remember getting goose pimples at that age, and I, I, I remember running to my teacher, can I play this? And she kind of looked at me, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, when was the first time you played this piece? <laughs> Were you, you know, I was persistent enough. Time? She finally gave in a year later, I was able to work on it. <laughs> So, I mean, it wasn't that long, but uh, yeah, so 16 was the first time I, I worked on it. Um, but the first time I actually played it with orchestra, oh gosh, I can't remember. I think it was, I was a student already in, in Indiana, so it was in my 20s, a, few, a number of years back, so. Roughly how many times have you performed this piece? Oh, ooh. <laughs> I can't tell you the exact number. I'm, I'm guessing around maybe nine or ten or something like that. I can tell you one experience when I, when I was um, in Italy, in, in, in northern Italy, in Torino, playing with the radio orchestra. And uh, it was my first time in Italy. And, you know, the rehearsal was supposed to start, but, they, you know, everybody was so friendly. They were just talking to each other constantly. And we couldn't start the pieces. I had to start. I had to start <laughs> quietly. So I kept waiting. I kept waiting. The conductors got to make sure they stop talking I said, mm -hmm. <laughs> before we can start. And I thought that was really funny because it just took forever. So, but anyways, yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking time to speak with us. Oh, my pleasure. It's been busy, but it's been a spectacular experience here in you. And thank you. Looking forward to the concert tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks. Yes, thank you. I'm, I'm, I too am very excited. I'm so looking forward to tomorrow.